my name is Dan from DK Film Podcast, and today we're going to be starting our very first episode of the podcast, so yeah, before I get on into things, real quick, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, um, first five episodes will be free, after that, after, from the sixth episode on, unless I'm going to do some special, unless I do some special episodes, y'all, have, y'all, it, it's going to be on Subscribestar, not Patreon, I actually am getting rid of my Patreon account, I actually, but DK Bricks, his studio and all the like, but if you want to see the full post, just $5 a month, I think that's a good price, in my opinion. If you have any problems with that, then, you know, hey, uh, you, I, you can talk to me, all right? I, I just think $5 a month is fair, but that's up to you if you want to listen to them, if you want to be able to continue hearing the full episode. If not, we'll be having clips here on YouTube. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much all the intro stuff I want to do. Oh, also, I'm not streaming this. I, I said in my last video I was going to stream these. I'm not. I just, that, that took a lot of energy out of me, and I need I need all the energy you can get right now. So, yeah. We got some, so, so yeah, that was good. I'm back on into this, folks. We got some news to talk about today. We've got stuff about Marvel, DC, Star Wars, and the film Tenet. So, yeah. Let's get on to that, and plus I've got some movies I'm going to want to review in the future. So, yeah, let's get this started, shall we? Let's. Alrighty, so here we are, and here's the first article. So how am I going? How am I? How am I going to do this? I'm going to talk. I'm going to. I already looked at the article. Uh, I'll give. I'm going to be giving my thoughts here, and and we'll. And I'll, if I have anything within my thoughts, I want. I might. Uh, I'll just you know talk about. It. Now this is the first episode I'm doing. Remind you again. Remind you guys that because I've got. I'm still learning the ropes here. I'm learning the ropes. Uh, I'm still figuring out things that need to be worked on, fixed, better, you know. It's just that, alright? I'm not trying to make it hard on us, but I'm not trying to be rough, but it's, you know, just how it is. It's, you know, I'm doing things. So, ye, our first news. MCU. The MCU, as you can see here already, the MCU has, there's a leak from Marvel that says a huge Avengers crossover movie is coming before Avengers 5. And I think, you know, how about we take a quick look at the bullet points they have here. The only Marvel movie still set to premiere in 2020 is Black Widow, which will be released in early November. If the coronavirus pandemic has died down enough by then. Hopefully this does. I'm kind of actually interested in seeing the film, but hey, you know what? Got no problem with that. With the MCU for Phase 4 scheduled Schedule delay, Marvel isn't expected to make any announcements about its future plans for the standalone Avengers movies. And a new rumor says that a says a mini Avengers type of movie is coming even sooner than we thought, echoing a previous report that said the movie this movie could set up Avengers 5 just like Civil War did with Infinity War. So on to this. So the my thoughts and what we're gonna be learning from this essentially, alright? There, there seems to be news that says that there will be a new film in the MCU that will be like a mini Avengers movie. We had something like this with Captain Marvel, Captain America: Civil War. It was based, it was like a Captain America film, but it could also be considered as an Avengers film. Now this could be coming, could be the upcoming Young Avengers film, but it seems like there are reports that it could be Captain Marvel too. Uh, could be as well. Now, real quick, I want to mention with Captain Marvel. I really don't think she deserves a sequel. She she wasn't that good, but if they do good with this, uh, do good with this, I'd be do good with the uh intro, but like do good with her in this book movie, where she's actually they make her more likable. I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't. I just don't care much for her, but if we can get a movie where she's actually a lot more likable, I'll happily take it. So, yeah. Uh, where was I at? Uh, uh, it sounds like there will be an appearance of Miss Marvel in Captain America's sequel, along with a number of other characters as well, alongside Captain Miss Marvel, but right now, one of the confirmed characters is Miss Marvel, which I think she's getting a show on Disney+. Plus. I could be mistaken. There will be no. There will be other major, like I, yeah, other major Avengers characters in the film as well. So this, though, with this film, we don't know what will be 
in the fourth or fifth phase. All that can be gathered from the source is that the film will set up the next major Avengers film. This could also be setting up, but just also will be setting up the Secret Invasion storyline from the comics. Which I haven't read the comics, but I do want to read them. Uh, they, uh, this will be interesting to see how this all plays out. I'm actually very interested in this. I'm not, I'm not knocking the comics. I will never knock the comics. The comics are what gives us these sources. Give these as a source. So, you know what? Hey, more the better. Um, Civil War did the same, but it was for Infinity War. So, yeah. Infinity War did that. This did this. And we're gonna hopefully get a good, hopefully this is a good film. But, again, I'm not overly excited about this. The only film I am really excited for in the Phase 4 right now is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It just sounds awesome. The name alone just sounds really good. I want to watch that film. <laughs> I hate that it has to be delayed. It's been delayed because of the dang virus. I hate the virus. Um, I hate. I bet a lot of you share my sympathies about the virus. The virus is annoying. I'm making it hard for me to do a number of things. But hey... <laughs> My goodness, I'm a little bit tired. But yeah, um, we'll talk a bit more about Cat tomorrow because one of the films that I have reviewed is Alita Battle Angel, so, which was a good film, I will say, but I do want to talk about that later. I do want to talk about that when we get to Alita, so yeah. So on to the next bit of news we've got. DCEU news. We will be learning next month just as, what the Justice League, that the Justice League Snyder Cut will be a movie or a TV show. So, yeah. Zack Snyder, director Zack Snyder reveals that it will be confirmed whether HBO Max's Justice League will be a movie or a series from a net form at next month's DC fandom, which I'll try my best to get a look at. I'm not going to just sit here and... Uh, I'd like to take a look at that, maybe write down notes that I want to talk about from the from the event, but we'll see. Uh, depends on if college is permitting it, time for me to go do that, but hey, at least it's live stream. It'll probably be like a Zoom call or something like that, but hey, it'll be cool. It'll be cool to watch, you know? So here's what we'll be learning about. We will be learning if Zack Snyder, if this is the Snyder Cup for Justice League, is a movie or a TV show in DC fandom. We still don't know much about this. And Zack Snyder himself said that no matter which version comes out, you'll be able to watch it in one sitting, which will be nice. I I do like having the ability to watch something in one go, so, you know, I I haven't really split things up, but, well, except for my TV shows when I watch them. I only watch, like, two episodes a day because, you know, that just, that makes sense. I'm not sitting here talking, like, like watch, binging an entire episode when I could be doing other things in the same day. Plus, I tend to get bored if I keep watching something over and over for a very long period of time in one day. But, you know, right now, it worked. It, but that, to me, you know, I always need something to help me, to keep me going because uh, of my ADHD. So, yeah. I also, I'm also autistic, but that's a whole other story right there. Which, actually, I do have plans regarding that. We're going to be doing a whole special episode in April. Because that's Autism Awareness Month. But we're going to get to that when we get to there. I'm not going to... I'm not going to try to pander you guys, or force stuff on you guys with it. No, I'm just going to try to explain things, you know? But again, uh, back to where we... So, back to the story. Uh, we will be finding this out in, fan, in fandom. We will also be getting movie announcements, and a teaser may appear of, next, of Snyder's version of the film. Now, I've seen some versions of people say, oh my god, we've got a trailer. I'm like, I haven't really looked into that. I'm waiting for an official trailer to come out, and it'll be cool to see what we get, actually. I'd love to see the footage. All I know for sure is that there's going to be Superman in a black suit, and I think Darkseid's going to be the villain, which will be really cool. I can't wait to watch that. I can't wait to see this, because Darkseid on... TV in a film would actually be really cool to see. That's just my opinion, of course, but hey, I'm sure y'all got your own opinions. <clears throat> Depending on which format this will be in, cutting for a film will be different from a TV show. So Zach said himself that he would want he wanted to do cliffhangers if it comes out as a TV show, which I think will be effective. Cliffhangers. For this, would probably be effective because, you know, we're not going to be sitting there and talking about one. We're going to, it's going to keep us wanting more. Although, it might be once a week. I'd be willing to wait a week. I've waited week a week for, like, 
Star Wars Rebels episodes and Colmore and other shows that I watched. I used to, I used to watch on TV, but now I just, I have HBO Max and YouTube to get myself consumption of stuff. So yeah, <laughs> just to be honest, I'm so glad we actually have that because that's actually I like the stream platform. But we can talk about that later. We'll talk. We can talk about the stream platform at a later date. Uh, there are reports that this will be a four-hour movie, which will be, which is around the length of a, one of the Lord of the Rings movies, which looks like a long AF. Uh, uh, this is a four-hour movie. This could be cut down into four one-hour episodes, which, hey, I mean, I remember seeing, watching a, a film theory video earlier, earlier today, which came out like three weeks ago about like how Zack Snyder, you know, how his cut's gonna be more, or it might have six of them. Like, no, it's four. Uh, I don't see them, if it's a four hour movie, it's best to have four one hour episodes. So, yeah, it works, honestly, if they do it as usual. Either way, I'm gonna love it. Hopefully, I think this might become the new canon for the DCEU. We'll have to see, of course, but we'll, we'll figure, we'll learn when we get there. Uh, we will find out next month, of course, at when DC fandom happens next month. Now, of course, I want to talk about the DCEU first a bit, but I want to save that for when we get to Shazam, because Shazam was a good film, but I want to talk about my thoughts and kind of go into the movies, the movie itself, because it, it could be better. It, 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 I think there could be, it could be better, but again, it'll be later in the episode, so if you want to hear that, sit and wait for a bit, I'll come, it'll be coming out right out, it'll be coming up, so don't you worry. So now, we're heading to that galaxy far, far away. With Star Wars. Alrighty. <laughs> the latest Star Wars rumor suggested to you guys there's a George Lucas cut for Rise of Skywalker. Um, the ongoing series of Star Wars rumors suggests that Lucas, George Lucas might have done some additional scenes. Now, real quick, I'm going to say this. Rise of Skywalker was alright. I haven't seen it since May the 4th. But... I look back, thought back on it. it. It could have been better, honestly. It's probably not one of the best films in the single trilogy. Although I was like, love, I love the thing. I would have defended it with my honor. <laughs> would have done anything to defend that film. But now it's like, eh, it was all right. Could have been better. But hey, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that you know there's cut scenes for this film. But a little more than that. We'll we'll talk about that. Plus, before we get into the, my thoughts here. Well, first bit. This is a rumor, just like what has been said around this one as well. The news has come. The news has uh, come before this uh, is that folks at Lucasfilm are planning to doing a reset of the sequel trilogy. Now, I'm mixed on that idea of there being a sequel trilogy reset. One of the main reason is I like I like the sequel trilogy. It was alright. It wasn't that bad, but it could have been better. But it. I would have, I would love it if it, I would have probably have loved it more if they actually did some planning, like they actually did like beginning, middle, end of like the whole trilogy. Each, the beginning would be the first movie, middle would be the second, the beginning would be the first movie, middle would be the second movie, and the end would be the third movie. And if they planned that out and they planned out what events they wanted to happen in each movie, that would have been a lot more enjoyable because I don't, I. Don't I? I it kind of just felt like, hey, okay, let's go on to the next uh, movie. Yay! Episode eight. All right. Uh, okay, now where are they gonna go after this? Oh, they could have done this a bit better. <laughs> there was not really much of a plan for this film, but hey, it it is what it is. I'm not I'm not knocking it. I just wish it could be better. I've had some discussions with people on Facebook because I'm in a number of Star Wars fans uh, groups, not just one. Uh, some of them are uh, these are Star Wars related. And some of them are the sequel trilogy related. And in one of the sequel trilogy groups I was in, they were like, "Yeah." A number of people were like, "Yeah, this is never gonna happen." I'm like, "Ah, oh, this could happen. It's a rumor. Remember, we should take rumors with a grain of salt." And I trust Midnight's Edge people. I I watch Midnight's Edge. If you haven't watched them, don't watch them. I highly recommend checking out their channel. Do some real good reporting on film and stuff, and talk about you know how people's reactions to things are, which I do enjoy. But, yeah, so, on with the news. Uh, this would obviously mean that the current single trilogy would be non-canon. Uh, so, yeah, I, 
like I said, I've heard things about it. Um, am I am I going to be surprised if this actually happens? Heck yeah, it it'll be a pleasant surprise. But I'll also be surprised if this never happens. But again, let's not keep our uh, let's not keep our hopes up on this. Let's remember, it's just a grain of salt. Take a grain of salt, folks. Uh, the, the rumors that have come out on top of this is that there are two scenes, well, more than two scenes, actually, from what I've learned from other sources, that Lucas has filmed himself, filmed for the movie. Now, we're going to actually scroll down to where these fil- to these episodes are, so that way we can kind of, I can say up the whole thing and then kind of, you know, give my thoughts on them. So, the first scene, one of them is a scene where Anakin Skywalker himself talks to Rey about how Palpatine survived. His explanation about how he survived was with the use of the Veil of the Force. This also ties into into the resetting of the single trilogy. So let's kind of read a bit more of this, all right? The actual, what they have written here. The very scene takes place after Rey thinks she's killed Chewbacca when fighting Kylo Ren. She would wonder why life has been so hard. Anakin Skywalker would appear as a Force ghost where he talks to her about the Empire, about how the Emperor survived after the events of Return of the Jedi. Anakin would explain more about the Halo Force. The Sith mirrors Palpatine uses that allegedly are a big piece of the rumored reset of the Sith. And that is, actually, from what I've heard, that is a big piece of it. This Veil of the Force would be a big aspect of how it became a thing. When we see Emperor Palpatine falling down the shaft, that's when he would go into the Veil of the Force, go start off the sequel trilogy of the uh, the ones we currently have, and another one would continue on thinking that the Emperor had actually died. So that'd be our divergence, kind of like with Star Trek. In the Star Trek universe, where the... I'm trying to remember, what was the divergence of that? I think... I know that when the Kelvin was around, it came out about... Oh, somebody just fell. I'll, I'll grab it later. Uh, that something uh, that they had um, episodes had, like... I'm trying to remember the words here. That, you know, when the Kelvin timeline was... The Kelvin was the first thing we saw. That's kind of started our divergence. Though I don't remember exactly what caused the divergence. But... It is a divergence nonetheless. I do. I haven't seen that the, the the Kelvin timeline or the original trilogy or the original timeline Star Trek movies in a while. So, give me a bit of leeway on that. I'll I'll remind myself when I go to work on that. Although right now we're doing a Star Trek run, but <laughs> let's not talk about that. Now, the second uh, the other thing is after the duel in the Death Star, where Kylo slash Ben talks to Han. We will be seeing Leia and Luke appear there. This would bring them together in the sequel trilogy. Um, so real quick, so let's kind of go over what they say here. The second scene would uh, rework what happened with Kylo Ren when Kylo Ren speaks to Han Solo after the lightsaber battle on the Death Star. Kylo speaks to Han and Leia, who appear, who appears as fourth. Re- uh, Le- so Leia is appearing as a fourth rejection. Luke appears soon after, bringing the three of the stars together one last time. Now. I kind of want to get my quick thoughts on these two bits right here. One, I would have loved to have seen Anakin Skywalker at one point in the sequel trilogy. God, I, that was my wish. My wish, not just Anakin, but also oh, Lando. I wanted Lando to be in the sequel trilogy as well, because he knows that guy as one of the characters, you know? He was the first African-American character we saw in Star Wars. But still, it's like, hey... Let's get this man in here. This man actually was played a big role in the rebellion in the uh, in the rebellion. So, gotta get this guy back in here. And apparently, he wasn't there until like episode nine, which I kind of wasn't uh, thrilled that he was. That took so long for him to make an appearance in it. But I was glad nonetheless that he made an appearance in it. Anakin Skywalker, though, I was upset that we didn't get any appearances about because Anakin Skywalker was the one character I is one of the two characters I love. He and Ray. They, it depends on which day I like who. But Anakin Skywalker was my first and still is my favorite character. Um, and I, I wish he actually got a, at least a cameo, at least a, an appearance in this film. Uh, heck, I would have taken it if he was there with Luke and Ray, Luke and Leia at the end of the film. Let alone uh, some of the other Jedi as well, like, like, like Obi-Wan and Yoda. That would have been cool. I would have loved that, having all the Force Ghosts we know in the Star Wars universe together. But hey, it's whatever. We had 
there's somebody actually did a redo, recutting of the, uh, actually added the forest ghost into the episode, tr- into the trailer, into the, like, the scene where he's like, I'm all the Jedi, Amber Palpatine, he's like, I am all the Sith. But, you know, it, it would have been, it, I feel like that would have been cool to see as well, and maybe, on um, by proxy, have, like, all the Sith Lords kind of, like, appear, from, like, somehow on Palpatine, I don't know exactly how, but there could have been something with that, but again, but it would have been cool. And with the last, the other scene, it would have been cool to see Ray and, I mean, I, Han, Leia, and Luke together in one scene, you know? We needed that. That They kept them all separate, which I'm sure they would have been able to handle this situation much better than, you know, how he saw it. <sighs> but, yeah. On to this. So... This isn't the first time we've gotten rumors of scenes from the Rise of Skywalker. For the Rise of Skywalker, there is the there is the rumor of JJ Cut and also the leaked script of Dual Fate. JJ Cut came about in January. I remember hearing about it. I'm like, I want to see that cut. This obviously the JJ Cut talks. It kind of helps reveal that JJ Abrams had a different idea for the film. Disney went in and just messed with everything, which messed with what he wanted to do. I would have loved to see what his original plan was, and I would have liked, I have to, I want to read the Duel of Fates script, I haven't found it yet, if somebody's able to find it, that'd be awesome, I think you can link it to me in the comments, or DM it to me on Twitter, but, uh, yeah, um, I would have loved to have seen that, but hey, you know, it'll be interesting to see. So, on to our last news, Tenet. Which is a film I do want to see, actually. That that looks like a really good film, and I will review that film on this podcast when we are done here. When when I after I go see it. Okay, I'm trying to. I, I just have some notes off to the off on another screen. So, ye. Ads. They make it so hard to show things to you guys. Okay, the new tenant release date has made U.S. Oh, movie theater owners optimistic for the first time in months, though there's concerns of heightened online piracy. So, I'll actually read my thoughts on here, and we'll kind of go through what the reasons are, because I think it might be good to, you know, go through that. So, can it might help, might be what helps theater or theater survive from COVID, from the COVID pandemic. It will be really. Ten will be released in August twenty fourth internationally and on September third for the U S. The film's release date for the U S. is basically a slow rollout. People have been craving this film for months now. Theaters say that Ten will have a long run in theaters. This will be big for the theaters because this will give theaters a chance to recoup the losses. Nolan has been pushing Ten to help reopen theaters. Uh, Nolan has been a big supporter of the theater industry. Theater owners are hoping that people will be choosing to see this on the theaters and not pirating it. Real quick, uh, the last sentence I said there, I remember seeing a video last night in my feed on YouTube, like, oh, I, why am I choosing not to go back into theaters? And I'm like, bye. I'm sure they won't miss you. Although right now they would love everybody to come, as many people as they can, and uh, they could fit in one theater. But... Probably like bye. I'm like I'm like it's me. I'm like bye. I'll just take it. I'll t- I'll use it. I can I can always use another seat. But yeah, so I I will say this: theaters, movie theaters are important, at least to our culture, because that's kind of like our version of a flickering of our campfire. Although that was although that's more like that with the end with film, like actual film projections. Nowadays, it's like, okay, we have it all digital. When it was film, the flickering of the light helped make us feel like we were watching a film together. Like, we were all having a campfire experience, which I like. I like that because it's like, you know, we get to sit here, we all get to sit together, watch a film together, and we all walk out of it from this from the same experience. Okay, ignore that. Uh, where is my ass? Ignore that. Uh, but it, it, we all came out from the same experience, and I loved it. I love it. It was so much fun. It's so fun to be able to sit there and talk with people, uh, uh, have people on your side with you, left and right of you, 
if you're by yourself, but if you're with family on either side, if whoever isn't on your side, if you're, but if you're surrounded by your family, then, you know, whatever. But you get to be able to sit this with pretty much mostly strangers and who you'll probably never see again in your life, but you'll get enjoyment out of. So, I enjoyed watching, when I went to go see Fire and Fire from Rome by myself, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed watching Stuber with my one friend. Uh, I, I enjoyed watching my watching a number of films with my one friend I have who I know where to go to movies. So I'm going to try to get on this podcast, actually. I'm going to try to get him on this podcast. He and I are good friends. Uh, I'll have to figure out how I'm going to get the audio in or something, but I'll figure it out for you guys to hear it. Um, but, yeah, he and I, we talk. We, we like to talk about the we, we discuss what we liked from the film. We, 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 like, on our way home, like, when he, after he, because he picks me up, I don't want to drive. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that, but... He, he and I, we like to just talk about the film. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I wish I was able to do this more often with him. But of course, you know, since I'm moving and all that, I'll be moving to a different place. This room ain't going to be the same after uh, after September, but he uh, will be, uh, although you'll probably be noticing changes as time goes on in here, but hey, let's not worry about that. Um, yeah, it was fun. It, it's fun. I would love to see theaters, you know, survive for one more, for a while longer. I hate that theaters uh, that streaming is replacing a stream uh, actual going a theater going experience because I love going to the theater. I love going to it. It's like an event for me. It's like hey, I get to go watch a film now that I've been wanting to see for a while now. So yeah, now after my whole little spiel there, what's yeah, okay? I'm I'm ro- I'm moving down on the wrong page here. Okay, we can talk. We'll go for these first. Inside spoke to theater owners and executives about their reaction to the re- new release by Fort Tenet. Warner Brothers announced on Monday that Christopher Nolan's anticipated new movie will be opening in theaters 70 plus, in 70 plus countries on August 26th and then in the U.S. on September 3rd. Jazz actually unprecedented, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong there. Owners and executives are optimistic that this new plan will help restart movie theater business. While theater owners are ex- and executives choose to remain anonymous, their identities are known and have been confirmed by insiders. Though there is a fear about piracy of the movie because this is, of this plan, several people inside spoke to, to you said they hope it hope because it's Nolan's movie and most people will want to go to the theater to see it. Yeah, I will be. Nolan's got some good movies. Okay, I was just thinking. From... So Nolan has been pushing Tenet to be all for open theaters, which I love that idea. I love that this film's going to be helping that. Uh, uh, in the March, uh, th- yeah, we've been crippled since March. God. Uh, the unprecedented plan to open Tenet around the world because for the U.S. Yeah, this is unprecedented. Normally, we would do it in the U.S. then, the globe. Or, heck, around the same day, it says here. So, the biggest theater chains in the world, AMC, Regal, and Cinemark, will be will all be open if I have the time. Tenant opens in the U.S., which is good. I have an AMC right by where I live. It's not that far of a walk, even though it, I could drive, but it's a nice step that far of a walk, which I like. But piracy, that is a whole another thing there. Why use oh, theater owners hope Nolan's, fan, Nolan's fans will choose the theater over piracy. I hope that too. I, because uh, I mean, like, like it's set up there, it's a Nolan film, you know. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that's it with uh, What's Face Films, with movie announcements. Now we're going to, uh, real quickly, swap on over to movie reviews. Yay, movie reviews. We're going to be talking about some movies I watched leading up to this. So, well, I will say this real quick before we get into that. Normally, what I would do is I would talk about... Uh, I would go over trailers and movie marketing. I haven't seen any of that yet. I've linked up to some. I've got. I 
officially found some really good pages I could work with, but we got to give, give us, give me a minute of that. Give me a minute. Next week, we're going to probably have more sources that I'll be constantly using as opposed to just searching it up. I, I just did that yesterday. Uh, although I re- already reported it on Saturday. I'm doing this on a Monday. So I, uh, and I've already found some news that I want to talk about that. And I'll probably have, and I have an excuse to watch a movie that are related to what we're going to be talking about. So yeah, let's get on to this. So, the first movie we're we'll be reviewing, Ad Astra. So, my thoughts. The film is wonderful. A space adventure is a wonderful space adventure. One of, one that makes this, makes a sun. Okay, real quickly before I continue here, actually, there might be spoilers in this. So if you want to jump off now, go ahead. Some of these are more recent too, so you might want to jump off. But that's not. I'm just giving you a heads up here. So. One that makes the son go after his father, a film where the actions of the father endanger the solar system. The film was well filmed and edited. They did a good job with it. The lighting for the film was well done with areas like Mars and Neptune, Arlen and the color of the planet. Yeah, I really loved that. That was... I couldn't get over that. They had scenes where, you know, it's like on Mars, you were bathed in the light of the red, in the red light of the red-orange lighting of the planet, which was beautiful. With um, Neptune, there was a slight blue tint on everything. And I, oh God, I ate that up. I could eat that up. I loved it. Uh, the acting was well done. Brad Pitt, who I did not notice was in the film, acted wonderfully. The story was simple. It had a lot going for it. The question of alien life in the film, there is the question of alien life, and we found out the answer. That's one thing I liked about the film. They had this one key, they had this one question that they kept asking they kept talking about in this film, and it was like, once we find uh, Roy's father, yeah, it's Roy, uh, he, uh, we find that out, and it's like, wow, so we're alone in the universe. At least that we know of. I mean, there is still the opportunity of there being extraterrestrial life forms in somewhere in America, somewhere in, you know, the somewhere out there in the universe. Uh, but we might not be able to hear them, of course. So, yeah. Uh, the re- world building was great for the film. They put a lot of thought and research into this. The music was wonderful as well. James Ray made a wonderful movie. Now, I do want to talk a bit about the world building. The world building in this film was really good. So, we get to see that we are in the future, although we have a bit of text in the beginning that tells us that it is in the future. So, we see it visually. I love the fact that the that the plot of this film was set up right away. That was also really good. Now, I'm just good. These, these notes I'm going over right now are stuff I wrote while I was watching the film, which I'm, I'm probably not going to be doing much more often. This was like a one-time thing, but hey. Uh, uh, the moon is accessible to everyone on the planet. I wish that was a thing for us right now, but hey, we got to wait. Hopefully, I, hopefully that happens both in my lifetime, because I'd love to go to the moon and just exist look out at the stars. Um, uh, the shot where the crowd is coming down to the moon service is wonderful. I love the fact that there are pirates on the moon as well. Like, that makes sense. They're not just the friends from here, but also the friends of people on the moon in general. Like, that works beautifully. Uh, I like also love the fact that the countries on the moon are warring over the territory, which is wonderful. I love that. That is just so... That makes so much sense, because, I mean... We've explored all of the world, all of the land on the Earth, if not most of it. Now we go warring over the moon. Awesome. Uh, let me see here. Is there anything else I want to really discuss? Yeah, I feel like one of the things, like when they had like the confrontation with the. Pirates on the moon. My god, that was beautiful. It was well done. And it really made me think, okay, yeah, fighting on the moon would be dangerous. Very dangerous. And I like that. It felt real. Uh, I also like the fact that they used the dark side of the moon to get to Mars, which makes sense. Uh, uh, okay, is there anything else? Uh, let's see. Uh, 
You also get an idea what the surge is like, because uh, that's what's been threatening the universe, threatening our solar system, and could irreparably damage it. I like that we got to see that, and what the problem it would cost to somebody in space, heck, let alone in general, but still, it makes sense. Enjoy it. Uh, let's see here. Talk about the lighting. All right, so that's enough. I want to talk about this film again. It was a good film. Um, well, if you stay through all, if, for anybody who actually did, I don't know if anybody did jump cut off, but I should have said it earlier. We'll be doing a uh, movie review. We'll be doing some movie. I'll be, I'll be doing a movie list. I'm starting a movie list, and it's gonna be fun. I think guys will actually like it. Hell, I enjoy it. Hell, I enjoy this concept actually. So yeah, now to. The next poster. Lead a Battle Angel. God, I love this film. This is a really good film. I see why people who have seen it want a sequel to it. It, it ends on a cliffhanger and there's more to a Lita story. Now, let's talk about Lita. Lita, oh boy. She is awesome. I love the character. She is so pure and innocent at the beginning and does what she can to fight for what is right. I love how the film touched on her past. She was a member of the enemy forces and one of the people who helped in the fall, which I really like that. That gives us more history about this character, and I feel like we have much, much more to learn about her in upcoming films, which will be fun to see if they actually do make a sequel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, in the fall, that is somebody who I, that was something that was actually referenced dimension a lot, and we don't know what that was until we see a flashback to Lita on one of the cables to the Sky City. To the Great Sky City, and uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, it you get we get to see that, and we're like, oh, so that's what the fall is. Oh wow, this is insane. Uh, and yet, yet she becomes someone who fights for justice. So uh, she is a good character. She's honestly better than Captain Marvel, and their films came around came out around the same year last year. Captain Marvel gave me the vibe that she was meant to pander to the FGWs, but Alita, she was someone who I who I love. Captain Marvel didn't feel like she grew at all in the film, only stronger in power, just because. But Alita, she grew. She was she is different than she is in the beginning of the film. You see her progression as a character. Uh, like I yeah, like I said there, I did feel like she was Captain Marvel was meant to pander to the FJWs. I'm not gonna get more into that. I'm not. I'll only go political if I have to, but I'm not going to just go straight into being political right now. So, uh, only, uh yeah, she did, I uh, just like, oh, Tesseract, her powers, woohoo, give me more, I, I feel like that movie, that movie could have been so much better, I actually was very interested in it until after I saw, you know, what's his face, the controversy, and I was like, I had to make sure, I had to tell myself to forget about the controversy, just try to enjoy the film. I tried, it wasn't that enjoyable. And I kind of disliked how she was all hyped up, like, oh my god, she's the character you need, to, the one character you need to watch for Endgame. And it's like, that we, and it's like, okay, well, if she wasn't hyped up for Endgame, then we would have been better. And then she wouldn't have done as well, but. And I feel like she didn't do much in Endgame, but again, I like that. I let, but I feel like she, her just being there wasn't that helpful. Um, but again, like I said earlier, I do want to see her be more likable. I want a likable Captain Marvel as opposed to some of these who feel like they're stuck up and they know what's right for everyone. No, I want somebody who's likable, especially since they are rumoring, if the rumor that she would become the head of the, of the MCU and the lead of the Avengers, I'm sorry, no thank you, I'd rather... Somebody better than her. She's not the one I want leading the Avengers. I don't want her to be the main, be big, big, big character of the Avengers that will be following because she's probably gonna, if, unless they do her right in two, but still. Uh. Okay, so back to my review on Alita. All right. <laughs> These high tangents always happen. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but it's good. Give us more things. Give me more to talk about. Uh, the story was so good. I loved it. I love it. I feel like they are told. They told a really good story there. I was loving every second of it, and I wasn't bored at all during it. I know I am making comparisons to Captain Marvel, but 
there are times in her film that I got bored. I didn't, this, that didn't happen to me any with Alita. Her acting, the acting was real good. Rosa Salazar was really good in this film. And that's saying something. She had to play a character who was mostly a robot, and yeah, she did a really good job of that. Everyone in the film did an amazing job. The director did a really good job telling the story. The world is beautiful. There's some rich world building in this film, and I feel like there's more to be told. The movie is great as well, but the cliffhanger at the end it really made it feel like there is more to be told from it. The CGI was well done. The music was great as well. I'm actually, I was actually listening to the to the music while writing this. Um, comparing to Captain Marvel, Alita is leagues ahead of Captain Marvel. I really hope they make a sequel to her to this film because it is deserving of it. Not Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, I feel like doesn't deserve it. So on to the next film. If I actually had music. If I actually was able to play the music for that and not worry about uh, play the one infamous scene, uh, one infamous uh, sound of music intro, I would so, but I don't want to worry about copyright. So, yeah. On to 2001, A Space Odyssey. 2001, A Space Odyssey. Stanley Kubrick made a really good film. I did feel bored throughout most of the film, but that is mainly due to how slow everything was doing in the film. I tend to like things that go fast, but it, it was a slow I was able to handle. I, the, what kept me wanting to watch the film was the fact that like there's a mystery here. We need to learn the mystery. It's like, ooh, give me more, please. Uh, I would have sped up sections of the film, but I feel like that is going to take, going to take be taking away a part of the film. What would that be? I have no clue. I feel like if you were to speed things up and use more crossword for the film, you would you would have more to add to the film, but again, I feel like that all this is done, but I feel like all this is done deliberately. The slowness in the movie was done deliberately, and I liked that. The story is something else. I feel like, it felt like four stories with the black monolith being what ties everything together. The music to the film really adds to the story. Uh, the beginning segment, the dog on the man bit, really interesting. I feel like that was well done, and I really liked the section of the film where Dave goes through time and space. Real quick, I'm going to say this. The music for... I have, like, two out of the three classical music songs that they actually use in that film on my, in my one bit of playlist I have on Spotify. <laughs> and, uh, God, is it actually worth a great... It's actually worth a listen. I'd highly recommend leaving it a listen if you have not watched, listened to it. Honestly, I'd recommend this one to anybody who hasn't seen it, but I'll get more into that later, all right? Uh, I really think this film kind of focus on one thing. Donna Man. Uh, the monolith on the moon, the space mission, or the whole journey for time and space. They could have been able to add more to the film, but I feel like, though I do feel like splitting up would be detrimental. Each part of the film, all plays, if we can scroll down, thank you, all plays together nicely. The mysterious aspect of the black monolith really adds to the story. I think they did a, they did a good job revealing, not revealing much about this black monolith. I feel like the it left the audience to figure out what it is. The whole trip through time and space does give uh, much for one. Doesn't give does not get much to pull on the ghost, but it is saying something. So the very end part where Dave is in his room up to the baby in space is trying to say something. However, everything is cut away, and what is being shown all conveys something. I don't know what that could be honestly, but I did learn a bit about it. It's like you know, in one one interpretation of it was like it was. Evolved. It was, this movie was basically showing us evolution, how it could become what was the star baby, essentially. That was actually a really good aspect. I really did like that. That was really cool. Um, uh, where was I at? I'm not sure. What, I'm sure some thinking about it was, about what I was shown might give me an idea was being what I was being shown. I never say this may be a cinematic masterpiece. Stanley Kubrick did a really good job of this film. I might have blown by the film, and I feel like. I have been changed by it. The film has experienced a damn good experience. And with that, everybody needs to watch the film. Even if you're not into science fiction, you need to watch the film. The film is just, mwah, chef's kiss. It's better than Citizen Kane, and I've seen that film, so I can, I think I can say that. Which has the title of best movie of all time. I'm sorry. 2001's better than this, dude. I could not, I, I did not understand much of that film, uh, what's his face, uh, Citizen Kane. But, on from there, Dune. The 
Let's talk about Doom, shall we? The story of Doom is pretty interesting. I think what was told was very good. I feel like they did a good job at adapting the book into a movie. The special effects in this film were well done. I really like the worms, Arachnus, uh, the worms of Arachnus or Dune, as the name is of the planet. Um, the worms were actually really cool. I actually really liked them. The, I came up with an idea of like maybe making something similar in design to them in my universe, but there are people actually write them. That would be really cool in this book universe I'm working on, which if you join subscribe star, you can get a five dollar uh, and you reach a certain level and you're at a certain level, I will be able to give you I'll be giving you a signed copy. Uh, the, the acting was well done. The music which was made by Toto was well done. I was, I was actually kinda of surprising to see that Toto who did Africa song Africa did a really good job who did the film, did the music. I was a bit amazed by that actually. There were moments where the music fell out of place, but nonetheless, the music was pretty good. I actually, one scene I remember was the battle, the one battle, the battle where they're outside of the, uh, outside of the complex that we see earlier on in the film. That, there were moments where the music just felt like it was, it didn't fit, but hey, it worked nonetheless, at least. Um, uh, I'm gonna want to read now Frank Herbert's book, which the film is based on. David Lynch did a good job at conveying the story. I will say, I liked how the beginning portion of the film was a rundown of everything you need to know about the world the story took place in. I did enjoy the verbal introduction where we were actually being told what it was via a wonderful look by a, I will say, a beautiful looking actress in a very interesting outfit, but uh, we do get to see, I mean, we don't get to see much of it, we just see like most of her face both of your face, but still. Um, gee, it, it, I like that, although, you know, don't get me wrong, a text uh, a text introduction like what we saw with Ad Astra is always a good idea, or what Star Wars does is always an option, but it was a pleasant surprise. I like how they kept you guessing about the spice and the nature of the world. It is, I, it is really cool that they to see that the spice changed the color of the eyes to wherever you used it. That was a really nice detail. That I really did enjoy that, that you know, they gave you an idea of like, like, oh, this person uses this bike, this person doesn't use bike. Very nice. Again, I feel like this was well made, well acted. <clears throat> the special effects were pretty good. I will. I'd give it a watch later down the line. And that's basically true. <clears throat> I did get enjoyed my outfit, but first of it dries. I might want to think like noise. I feel great for drink, but I will after we talk about his name. And then the whole greater DCEU. So, and I've already spoiled what we're talking about next. Shazam! Shazam's actually pretty cool. Shazam was a pretty good superhero. I liked how it didn't take itself seriously at times in the film. This is probably one of the better DCEU films. The film wasn't dark like most of the films in DCEU. I feel like they did a good job of introducing the character Shazam. I liked the montage uh, that Shazam and Freddy had when trying to see what Shazam's power, superpowers are. That was a, well. That was done differently than in other superhero films. I also liked how Billy and his family were got were uh, superpowered at the end of the final battle. That was that was so fun to see. I was so giddy. I was like, <laughs> just so happy and excited to see that actually how that would play out. That was so cool. They did a really good job with that sequence. Um, uh, it was fun. Uh, Doctor Savannah was a good villain, though. We all wanted to see wanted to see Black Adam, which I think in the first I think the first end credit was alluding to. This was all around a fun superhero film, uh, which we need more of. The MCU is going to be growing as time goes on, but this one was nice. Uh, so was the DCU, but I mean, like this one was fun. We don't have much fun movies, movies that you could just sit off and sit down and watch and have a laugh at. Don't get me wrong, Thor Ragnarok and I think the Spider Man movies are good are good for that, but. It's good to have one for DCE, at least. Uh, uh, I like how there are moments where the heroes we have seen in DC were mentioned. Freddy Sharks was one of them being alluded, was one way of them being alluded to in the universe. The last scene where it was especially cool with Superman showing up. It was, it was pretty cool. Like I'm not gonna lie, I liked it. The acting was well done. David Sandberg did a good job telling the story. Zachary Levi and Asher Angel. We're good in this film. They both were playing essentially the same character, uh, but you know different aspects of them. David Lynch, uh, 
Zachary Levi, Shazam, Astro Angel, Philly. But uh, it, it worked. I'm not gonna lie, it worked. Um, all around a great film, and it was a lot of fun to watch. Now, now that we've talked about this, I would. I want to say I think we need DCEO could be better. The DCEO now with the Snyder cut that we've got coming out, I think that's going to be one way that this is going to get better. But the DCEO could be a lot better. There's some tonal issues. Don't get me wrong, the MCU isn't perfect, but it's the best way to go about things. I actually wrote down one day, one day, well, how things go. Like the first thing, how like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, John Jones as well. Uh, and then an Avengers film. And and then, you know, the Justice League film. Uh, but, yeah, all around, I feel like that could have been a good... This could have been better. There are moments where, like, like the DCU could be better. I feel like they're just trying to catch up the Marvel. But it's like, Ruz, slow down. Slow down. We need you to get... We need you to wait. And give us some time. You need... we Marvel MCU is already going to... It's probably still going to be around. But they're going to be leagues ahead where DCU is. Give us something that's starting off again. Give us that wonder and awe. Right? You don't need to catch up to Marvel. Marvel, you need to take your time. All right? Marvel took time to get there. No, Marvel wasn't trying to compete with anybody. It wasn't trying to catch up to somebody else. No, no. They were trying to tell their story. Tell your story. And tell it in a good way. All right? Uh, and, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, like the last feat, like the film, the Justice League film, which is meh. Uh, it had its own problems, but, you know, it it felt like they were just like, okay, we'll just constantly redo, un, uh, we'll just fix everything that was loud, bad with the last one, uh, up to, you know, Shazam and Aquaman, which were good films. I, Wonder Woman 1984 still have to come out, but it'll be interesting to see that one. I have an actual idea on what they could do with that film, but I'm going to talk about that when we get to talking about it, because I want to... I think that would be a great way to have uh, what's in the face, uh, Wonder Woman grow. But that's just my opinion, of course. I'm not, you know, directing this film or anything. Although I do hope to direct one day. I really do hope. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, the DCU could, start, could go from, could benefit from, you know, one tone. Because if we had, like, one that was dark and brooding, would that be a great addition to the list of, of uh, films we're getting that are uh, MC, uh, uh, Cinematic University we're getting. We got one for Godzilla for Pete's sake, which honestly I love. I love that Godzilla now has his own MC, his own EU, uh, his own uh, cinematic universe. But yeah, um, again, they just need to slow down. I feel like a restart would be the best way, and kind of plan out where they want to go to, and go from there. So, now that we've talked about all these films, I want to do, I have a movie list, and we will go take a look at that right now. Alrighty, so here is the movie list. Now, I have every, I have up to like a hundred right now, that's just because I want to be able to make sure we can be able to, so we have room to talk about films, but we're going from one to one hundred. Of course, the first five slots are going to be filled up, and not anything else. The time goes on. We're going to be adding more films. We're going to be adding new ideas. We're going to be adding new films. Things like this. films are going to be changing in their positions. This isn't going to be official. I might actually make this something available for people to take a look at on the subscribe star because you know, hey, you might as well get a take. Want to take a look at this? You can. But yeah, so we have for number one right now. Temporarily, right now, I think this is going to stay for a while. 2001. Uh, space. Uh, let's see. That was just a really good film. I Nothing to me compares that. And I, don't get me wrong, I like the MCU, which I have a shirt of. Although when I first recorded this, I was wearing a Star Wars shirt. And oh my god, Star this, this beats Star Wars for me. Um. I mean, as my best and one of my favorite films of all time, Star Wars still has a, has the ranking in my special in my heart, in my uh, for me in a special place. But this film needs me to talk about. This film was just so good. I loved it. I loved it. 
I can't wait to see. Uh, I can't. I'm gonna be giving this a watch again, not right away, but you know, later down the line. Next on the list, Alita, Battle Angel. That was a pretty good film, a really good film. That definitely was worth the watch. I fell in love with the character. You know, the movie was good. The, the characters were good. The, everything about that film was good. It it wasn't as well as the 2001 was, but it definitely was there close enough. That, I don't know if you thought that or the other thing, but don't worry about it. But it was really good. They did a really good job with it. I I hope they make a sequel. And now, we got Shazam. Which he himself was a good film. I heavily enjoyed the film, actually. And I had a lot of fun with it. Um, is it something I would say it would deserve to be higher on the list? I mean, depends. Depends on where we put other stuff, but, you know... I definitely say it does definitely deserves to be where it is right now. And then, add Astra. Which, it itself was good. It just, there are just moments where it kind of just, you know, it could have been better, but, again, I think they did a really good job with this film. And last but not least, Dune. Dune was alright. Though, I know, it was just pretty good. I mean, it could have been better. There are just moments where we're just like, okay, um, okay, this could be a bit done a bit differently, but hey, it worked, it was nice, it was a good film, I enjoyed it, all these films I enjoyed, but, you know, the one that I loved, I enjoyed the most was 2001, so, yeah, and I think that is all we got to talk about, we have time to be talking about today, folks, so I hope you guys enjoyed this card day, this podcast, the first episode of DK Film Podcast. Now, real quick, if anything seems to be jittery or anything when it came to me talking, um, that's just because my computer is hating me right now. I don't know if you can hear it, uh, it's fans running right now, but it's hating me. It hates my guts. It wants to probably murder me, <laughs> uh, in my sleep at some point in the future, but hey, we got to, we, I'm gonna make sure, I'm getting a new computer soon. Uh, actually, this week, uh, so by the time this episode comes out, I'll probably already have it. I'll be working on uh, getting it ready to go for recording. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not, if you're watching a podcast, do a like or whatever. I don't really know what it is you do for subscribe. Star. Not hit your button, subscribe. If you subscribe, star, let me know you liked it. Um, again, check out the subscribe star. Um, we've got, uh, we'll be doing the first five episodes for free on YouTube, but once we go into subscribe there, we are going paid. You gotta pay to watch. Five dollars a month, nothing much, it's not much, hopefully you're able to, hope you guys are interested in plus if you do go into subscribe there, you'll have the whole, all access to the behind the scenes, to the, uh, backlog, so, you're getting a bit, pe- some penny for your, you're getting a pretty penny for your money, alright? You're getting some good stuff for your money, alright? Um... Let me see what else. Oh, if you're watching, if you're watching this on, if you're watching for DK Breaks Studios, hit that subscribe button. I'd be greatly appreciated if you could. We are right now at 150 subscribers. My goal is to get to, you know, hopefully get to 250 soon or 500, depending on which one I want to do a thing for. But hey, check us out there. Real good channel. Also watch. Uh, also, you know, uh, and while you're there on DK Breaks Studios, check out some of our other videos. Along with paying that subscribe button, so you can know when we do more episodes of DK Film Podcast. Podcast. I, 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 we got playing more in store for you folks. We're going to be talking about a whole lot of other films. We're going to talk about some franchises next month and some upcoming news. So, yeah, you guys are excited for that. I can't wait to do this. Uh, can we, uh, I enjoyed making this for you guys. So, remember, like, comment, share, and subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good Check out my socials, things are those in the description down below as well. And my. Oh, uh, what's his face? Uh, my friend's on Ryan. Leave that in the description below, as always. So, yeah, you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed making it for you guys. And this is Dave from EK Film Studios signing off. Remember, you're the fourth, and the fourth one is always. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.